let's start. Yeah. So today we'll enter a new topic about generative model. One of the prominent model for generative is generative adversarial network. Uh, there is many model of generative, but uh, GAN is among the best model that works very well for image data and other data. So we will cover GAN and later we will cover probabilistic diffusion models. And yeah, after that, maybe we can continue to other topic on generative models. Okay, so let's start with GAN. So you have to understand what is generative models and how GANs work. And let's see some early model called deep convolution GAN or DC GAN and conditional GAN. And you have to be able to build your first GAN uh, using Colab and PyTorch. So let's start with what is uh, generative models. So Richard Feynman once say like this, he said, what I cannot create, I do not understand. That translates, if you do not understand the patterns in data, the proof that you don't understand is that you cannot create the data. In other words, if you can create the data from the data, you can create new data from existing data, then that show that you understand the patterns or the probability that generate the data, okay? So what you have learned so far is discriminative models, including classification regression. So we can say in probabilistic term, learn hypothesis function that map input X to some label Y, or in probabilistic term, I say, learn the conditional probability distribution P, Y, X. But in generative model is, in simple term, if I give you data, give me new data that is similar or the same with the existing data. But this new data is not exist in the data set, okay? So how to translate to mathematical language? We learn the probability of input data X and label Y simultaneously, okay? So we are learning joint probability instead of conditional probability. There is a relationship between conditional probability distribution and join probability distribution through bias rule, but currently these two island of models is working independently. Means if you work with convolution neural net, you are in this discriminative models, for example, or if you're working with guns, you are in generative model, you are doing join probability instead of you are doing conditional probability. So in discriminative models, somehow you learn start from supervised learning and supervised learning. This taxonomy is based on availability of the label, right? And generative model can be done unsupervisedly, okay? It can also be done by supervised learning, but most of uh, uh, generative models is actually unsupervised learning. So what is unsupervised learning? I give you data, but no label. And the goal is learn the hidden structure or probability distribution that generate the data. How you learn it, we usually call it density estimation as the core problem in GAN. So you have to estimate the density that generate the data, okay? So let's say there is a data here in the dots uh, picture here, the dots here, and there is a counter plot here, the counter plot showing the probability distribution that generate the data. 
So in terms of generative models, there is two ways, explicit and implicit way, you can fit to model uh, to estimate the probability that generate the real data, okay? So in generative models, the problem statement, I give you training data, generate new data, yeah, with the same, uh, from the same distribution. So for example, I give you picture of all celebrities, maybe 20,000 picture on the left, okay? We call it P data. What is P data? It's a probability distribution that generate the celeb data set, okay? Do you know P data? You don't know and nobody knows and nobody will ever know, okay? So what we can do with this situation, there's no label, there's no uh, information about P data, what we can do to generate new sample, okay? So the goal of generative models, we want to learn probability distribution of model called PG or P generation that can approximate P data, okay? So we want to make PG to be more, to be very similar to P data without knowing P data. It's quite complex problem, but this problem known in mathematics as a density estimation. So you have the sample data, you don't know the density that generate the data, and you make a model to estimate or approximate the density that generate the data. The picture you show on the, on the right side is not human being. This picture is generated by AI. Okay, so let's see from very simplicity, uh, simplistic way. So there is a P data curve here on the right side. So if we make a model to fit PG to P data without knowing P data, what we know is only the sample of real data. Okay, and sample produced by the generative model or generator. So we should be able to compare sample of real data and sample of generator, the yellow and green here. And when we make sure that these two samples are similar, we can conclude that PG is already approximating P data. Okay? So quite complex at the beginning, but let me show you later some animation to make sure that you can learn in visual way. So how we do this? Uh, researcher, of course, have many techniques, method and techniques. There is explicit density estimation, there is implicit density estimation. For explicit way, you explicitly define and solve PG. You define a function PG and then adjust the parameter but it's hard to make these images because it's very high dimension with explicit density. So what some people do is learn the model from sample only, okay, without explicitly define PG. This is what we call implicit generative model. So why is very important and becoming more important in Gen AI? Because let's say if you have probability distribution or you have data and you can estimate the probability distribution that generate the data, then you can represent and manipulate the high dimension probability distribution. You can perform in first reinforcement learning. You can train missing data. If you do semi-supervised learning, you can make prediction on missing data and many more. If you're watching TV using Samsung TV, the high resolution pixel that generated by Samsung HD PTV is generated by AI. It's no longer by sensor. So let's say you have images with high resolution, yeah? And you have another image with lower resolution. If you can train generative model for high resolution data set, then you can up uh, scale your images to create, for example, image super resolution, like the old picture of your grandfather, you can make it colorful, you can make it high resolution, or you can translate zebra uh, 
uh, picture to horses. Yeah. Or you can create art or you can create face, your face in when you are 75 years old. This all uh, generative models can do. And I list down here the, the, the use cases for computer vision, speech recognition, natural language. I, we don't have to cover one by one. But the ability to generate new data set from existing data set enable many use cases. Okay? And this makes GAN very uh, important uh, in the landscape of generative models. So GAN itself is part of the implicit density estimation. There is many other way to do on explicit way, but doesn't work well. GAN is implicit way, okay? So with GAN, we only work with the sample data set and generator uh, data set, okay? So I study GAN when I take my PhD. Uh, and there is a variety of GAN. So if you look on this uh, chart, I take my PhD in 2015. I face the exponential growth of GAN. Every day uh, there is new GAN until all of the alphabet gone. A, B, GAN, B, C, GAN, even the Greek one, alpha GAN, beta GAN, all gone. Because so many models was proposed at the beginning because we don't really understand how it works. But now it's quite different. We have better understanding on GAN. So GAN, how it works, there is some key concept you have to understand before you take a look on the code with JC. First, we, want, we have to define our problem. We want to sample from complex high dimensional training data distribution. We want to generate sample, okay? The key idea, first key idea of GAN make a neural network as a generator. The input of this neural network should be random noise, but you know the probability distribution that generate the random noise Z. We call it PZ, yeah? So you can choose Gaussian distribution, uh, Gaussian distribution to generate Z, and you enter the Z into neural network, yeah? Initial paper of GAN, just use MLP, multilayer perceptron. Later on for image, they prefer to use convolution neural network because it can understand the spatial pattern better. Yeah. So Z, you enter to neural network, you will get fake image or generated image. Okay. Of course, you can get this picture like woman here if the generator is already smart enough. The problem is how to train good generator to generate this uh, picture of the celebrity. That comes into the second idea of guns. To train the uh, generator, compete it with the discriminator. So place another neural network, you can use MLP, multilayer perceptron, or you can use convolution neural network to teach or to guide the generator during the generation so it can produce more realistic uh, synthetic faces or synthetic data set. Okay? So it's like a competition game. We call it minimax game. Why we call it minimax or zero sum game? Because if generator becoming smarter, discriminator becoming uh, more uh, fully, yeah? So if generator smarter, then generator becoming not able to differentiate between real image and synthetic image, okay? So the generator try to mimic uh, example from data set, yeah? Sample from unknown probability distribution, and discriminator receive the sample from both real images and generator output. And discriminator have to tell or output a scholar that tell you, is it real or is it synthetic? So if this is zero sum game or minimax game, if you train by NAS equilibrium, 
uh, Nas is a professor Nas uh, in game theory. He said that if you compete two neural network in zero sum game, it can reach equilibrium where the discriminator cannot differentiate anymore. Is it real or fake? And generator can really generate good image. Okay. So initial idea of gun is to reach uh, NAS equilibrium. So this is just a tutorial from NIPS 2016. You can imagine, you can have a metaphor like counterfeit and police game. The counterfeiter usually make fake money and then they trade and then police catch them because police or discriminator can easily recognize this is fake and this is real. But the generator here, which is the counterfeiter, can learn why this police or discriminator can recognize this one is fake, this one is real. So it can learn. And if this game you continue, it will reach an equilibrium where counterfeiter can generate really nice look fake money and the discriminator or the police cannot differentiate okay this is just a metaphor to explain the two concept of gun so let's see the mathematical formulation so gun if you translate the idea there is marginal data distribution which is that generate the data i call it q x so it's called probability distribution that generate the data and for the model, I call it P, okay? So G is actually generator. So generator sampling from Z, from known probability PZ. And then it's sample X, which is X here is the synthetic data set, which is we can say in probabilistic way is conditional probability between X and Z. And then D receive both data from X and from key X or the unknown probability that generate real data. So a discriminator receives two data set, real data and fake data. And the job of discriminator is to discriminate, okay? Because this is zero sum game, we have to define minimax objective. Means that if generator becoming smarter, discriminator becoming uh, not able to differentiate this is real or fake, okay? So the initial uh, min-max formulation of uh, GAN is like this. There is a notation is here called expectation value, means that this is a probabilistic term. So X sampled from P data, log D, plus expectation value Z sampled from BZ, log one minus D. I hope you can see where is the minimax because this is one minus D, okay? So if we draw in probabilistic way, this is how it works. So once we got the objective, minimax objective, how we do stochastic gradient descent? So minimax mean one point you minimize over theta G generator weight parameters, and one way you maximize over theta D, which is discriminator weight parameter with this objective. So discriminator with parameter theta D minimize a uh, maximize objective such as DX is close to one, which is real. And D with input GZ is close to zero, which is fake. And generator minimize objective. Yeah, so this is like kind one minimizing, one maximizing, like zero sum, ga sum game. So initial model of GAN, we call it minimax GAN. We perform two time gradient descent. The first one, gradient ascent, to maximize this objective over parameter of discriminator. And the second one, gradient descent, to minimize this objective for generator parameters. So Ian Godfellow, uh, the, the students of Jan Lekun at that time, proposed this algorithm. 
So it's sample a mini batch from noise to generate fake from generator. Sample mini batch uh, from noise will generate fake data. And then they also sample mini batch from real data and then update discriminator using stochastic gradient ascent using this objective and then loop it from sometimes like k time and then after k time of discriminator update then we update the generator using stochastic gradient descent so two times stochastic gradient model yeah so my thesis for phd was i thought that why we need to have this k i remove this k i just say just do stochastic gradient descent ascent in simultaneous way you, we don't need this k loop yeah but we need to change the objective because the objective is uh bring uh why we use this iteration because the objective is wrong so i redefine the objective function i call it sing hon gun yeah you can see in i triple e my paper for phd okay so the problem with a vanilla gun like this is not stable. Sometimes discriminator cannot learn anymore. Sometimes there is vanishing gradient, yeah? So the simple tweak, we call it NS gun. The problem with this objective function, yeah, is bringing a vanishing gradient and the tweak is just make gradient ascend on generator instead of gradient descent. If you look here, generator perform gradient descent with this objective, one minus D. Is actually, I can do gradient ascend, but I have to change one minus D, yeah? I have to remove, just lock D but I no longer perform gradient ascent descent. I perform gradient ascent ascent. And that is what we call NS gun. NS gun perform two times gradient ascent on both generator and discriminator. But it's more stable compared to uh, minimax gun or MM gun, okay? So the whole idea of those uh, initial model of gun uh, is described here. In Gun Lab, we will learn about this later. And after the NS Gun uh, paper, there's a lot of gun. Yeah, what they do initially, they change the discriminator loss definition, generator loss definition, and many definition coming from many theorem in mathematics. Okay, like the first one, MM Gun. And then becoming NS gun, they just change one minus D to minus to minus uh, log D. The second one, Wasserstein gun, we will learn next week. Okay, and many more. This is just a snapshot. Okay, what's the problem with training gun? It's not stable. The initial theorem is finding Nash equilibrium. But what we do actually, stochastic gradient descent, we never define what is Nash equilibrium. So why we have to stick with minimax GAN or minimax objective? Because we, uh, we're actually not finding Nash equilibrium. So we can change, we can freely change the objective function definition, okay? So until now, we never find Nash equilibrium. We actually, GAN is just simple, uh, two-step gradient descent. You can do stochastic gradient ascent ascent or stochastic gradient ascent descent. Okay, and you can do simultaneously. You you don't have to iterate discriminator k time. Yeah, but you need to have good objective function. Okay, but before that, there's many theorem coming from experimental heuristic experiment uh, that we use until now is summarized in this Tim Saliman uh, paper called Improved Techniques for Training Guns. All of them here, the author is on OpenAI. 
So gun techniques that is being used until now is like feature matching, mini batch discrimination, historical averaging is already becoming function in PyTorch. So you don't have to worry how to implement all of this heuristic technique in this paper, like feature matching. You can just search on the sample code. Mini batch discrimination also the same. It's a very common technique, so I can skip it. What about MLP? If we use MLP, it's not sensitive to the spatial pattern of image. So in 2016, Alec Rafford, now in OpenAI, uh, uh, introduced the first DC gun, uh, deep convolutional neural network, but with gun architecture. So DC gun architecture, the paper is here, you can find. So actually, the problem is how we can upscale the convolution layer so it can receive Z or from random noise and upper size make the size of convolution bigger. Okay. So with implementing this kind of convolution neural net, this gun achieve very good result on MNIST. You can see here, ground truth MNIST on the left gun on the middle with NS gun and DC gun sharper image more realistic it's also tested on uh, El Sun bedroom data set it's more realistic as you can see and Alec Rafford show that if the generator can represent uh, probability that generate images then we can perform factor arithmetics. Let's say smiling woman minus neutral woman plus neutral man can be smiling man. And he proved that it can be done using DC gun. Okay, deep convolution neural nets uh, is being used until now. Now there is so many gun model like pro gun, style gun too, yeah, more advanced than DC gun. But because this lecture is introductory level for gun before you explore complex architecture, I hope you understand the concept. Okay. So how we can make sure that gun can generate a condition? For example, I only want to generate zero or one or five. Or in case of this one, I, ju I just want to generate men picture, not woman. So conditional gun is uh, very important. For example, you want to perform emotion generation or face generation. Let's say you want to make a face app to generate your face when you are 75 years old. Okay. So you need to give condition and this introduced by a paper from Mirza, yeah, from Montreal University. He said that just use normal gun, but you input the label. Okay. So, for example, the label is woman or man. Just input the label together with Z and X. Yeah. And with that, you, when you generate from generator, you can uh, input noise Z and X. And then you can generate uh, based on your precondition. With conditional gun, you can make this emotion detection or generation, okay, like this. Now it's more advanced because gun now is very, very sharp, can generate sharp image. I will show you example, style gun to generation. So you can see many pictures from the original paper. This is high resolution. You can see this guy, this kid, this lady is actually not exist. This model is generated by style gun. Okay, now version two or version three, I don't know. But you can reproduce this kind of a, a gun is a many, many sample code in GitHub. Okay. So style gun propose a uh, uh, deeper architecture, not as simple as DC gun, yeah? 
this is the architecture of style gun. Okay, so more complex, but the mechanism, how it works, is still the same. Yeah. Other than style gun, there is pro gun, progressive gun, I mean, and, and there's many more gun, yeah. So you can you can you have to uh, 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 find more paper regarding gun uh, in recent paper. Okay, so before we close this course uh, and practice with practice with gun, you can use this tool, gun lab. I will send to the chat room. Okay, so. The two concepts of gun. First, you create noise from non-distribution like Gaussian. On the left here, there is noise. Okay, let's make our own pattern. I want to make data with this pattern. I want to make University of Indonesia pattern. Okay. Okay, this is enough data. Okay, so all data, green points here, have these patterns. Okay, so the problem in GAN, can I generate more points with similar pattern with UI that I show you before the patterns? Okay, so noise will generate fake sample. Okay. We call it fake sample. And data is real sample. Okay. Generator is built using, let's say, MLP or convolution neural network. And then discriminator will input from real and fake. Yeah, of course, in batch. And have to tell, have to output is this real or fake data? Okay, initially when generator generate bad sample, discriminator will generate, will easily say this is fake, this is fake, this is fake, okay? But if we train using some minimax or zero sum game objective, then one day discriminator becoming uh, smarter to differentiate, uh, uh, becoming fuller, cannot differentiate and generator becoming smarter to generate near real sample okay so initially we said there is nas equilibrium when it happened but the algorithm we use for training gun is two times stochastic gradient descent you can do stochastic gradient ascend descent or ascend ascend like i we discussed before but when you change the stochastic gradient descent, make sure you use the right objective function, okay? So you connect the gradient of two learning. First is generator learning, and second is discriminator learning. You can iterate discriminator learning k times before updating generators, but in my thesis, I proved that it's not necessary. You can just simultaneously update. Okay, let's try. Okay, the initial definition of GAN is using uh, what so-called KL divergence. We will cover tomorrow, uh, next week, about pullback liber divergence and jensen sinan divergence. But you can imagine uh, this divergence is the measure of distance between two probability. What is the two probability? The two probability is for the real data and for the fake sample. We don't know the probability that generate the real data. We approximate probability that generates fake sample by this generator. But we don't know what is uh, uh, probability that generate UI uh, pattern here, okay? So KL divergence is a measure in probability that if you have two sample from two probability distribution, estimate the distance of the probability distribution. kullback liber divergence is asymmetric measure of two probability distribution. And Jensen-Sannan 
is the symmetric version of KL divergence. Okay, so initial gun model using KL and Jensen channel, and you can see the plot of the divergence. Yeah. Okay, so how to read this uh, animation? Uh, so you uh, expect the loss of discriminator and generator becoming lower and lower, and you expect it becoming convergence. But it takes too long to wait here. So I will give JC uh, to demonstrate some code, or you can ask ChatGPT to make your first gun and train in using Google Collab and PyTorch. Okay. Next week, we will continue our gun learning. We will learn about uh, uh, Wasserstein gun. We will learn more about divergence that I mentioned, KL divergence, jensen sennen divergence, and other type of divergence. So you can define your own objective and then train uh, Wasserstein gun. OK, please, Jesse. Thank you, sir. Last second. Uh... Let me uh, share my screen first. Okay. Okay, sure. Uh, as always, uh, we can we will be using Google Collab and ChatGPT for this one, for this uh, practical sessions, and for this one we will be trying to recreate uh, or implement the uh, gun models or architecture. Uh, if you already have your Google Collab and ChatGPT ready, we'll be start uh, prompting. For this first one, we'll ask ChatGPT uh, for what is the flow of uh, GAN architecture? What is the flow uh, of implementing GAN architecture? Like you see, uh, for the first one, it is generating of realistic data, data augmentation, anomaly detection. This is the style of this is this is not the uh implement implementations, but what we want is we want to recreate. Let's try to uh change the prompt. Sorry, create gun architecture and Google Clap. What is the flow? So for the flow, it will be uh, loading the and process the data, and we will be creating the generator model, uh, also the discriminator model, and we will compile the uh, model for discriminator, and after we uh, build the generator and discriminator, we can combine those to create again. And on that uh, compiled model or GAN, uh, we can train the models and generate samples from that. OK, uh, because we already know the flow for this. Uh, we can start prompting for the code. One second. Okay. Uh, for this one, we will be creating for uh, simple text generation, so it will not take too long to uh, train or something. Uh, what we can do, we will we'll start prompting to create a new cell. Uh, to load a simple data set for text generation and Google Cloud. Okay. Uh, it made uh, some simple data sets, the quick brown. And let's see. Also, it uh, process the data first and tokenize and create sequences from it. Let's copy this code. Make sure there are not any errors. 
or we can just uh, do some bug fixing on ChatGPT also. Oh, and I will copy this prompt to the chat. One second. This is the first prompt and also our second prompt. words it only has 35 uh, words and maybe uh it's not enough but uh, we'll just use this one for example and after that we will create a generator for this one we can ask hpp write an cell to design uh, the architecture of the generator <clears throat> second the generator network generator network for this one we will be try to use cnn okay they are making the function for uh building the generator let's see see the code Okay, there's some error. And let's see if you can do some bug fixing for this one. Generate triple generator. And the error on is on this one. Especially hmm. let's just give up this uh error is this over okay see if it will fix the code for us uh one second let's see if for this one it works okay uh it works for the new code it gives us. Uh, this is the summary of our uh, model for specifically specifically for our generator model. And for next step, uh, as you can see in here, after we build the generator model, we will be creating this discriminator model for the prompts. Uh, we can ask a similar uh, prompts with write in your cell to one second uh to design the architecture design the architecture uh, of of the discriminator meter network As you can see, it's quite similar, but this one, it will be the uh, discriminator uh, architecture instead of uh, generator. And let's see how uh, it implements it, the generator model. Okay, uh, there are no errors. So this is will be our second sequ sequential models from uh, using ReLU. And let's see. For this one, the params will be 18, 182,000. And this will be our uh, architecture for a uh, discriminator model. So as you can see, we have already done the first two steps of creating our uh, our own GAN model. So uh, after we build our generator model and discrim discriminator, discriminator models, let's see uh, what we can do. Uh, before we combine the generator, uh, what we can do we, is uh, we can define the last functions for both uh, architecture. Uh, we can do that by asking ChatGPT to one second, write initial 
cell so again uh, to define the loss functions for generator and discriminator discriminator okay let's see well we uh i will uh, copy this the prompts first so to look simple okay i've done this one and this one this first and if you have this, the error you just have to uh put it on the chat gpt yourself and this is the prompt for generating the uh discriminator architecture or models and for this one we will defining the loss function for generator and also for discriminator okay uh let's see this is the function for discriminator and also for generator and we just copy the code for in here and here for functions and we'll be using that later okay uh after we have uh, defined our loss functions uh we can continue with the flow which is uh which is combining the generator and the discriminator to a single uh, GAN model. And as you see, to write a new cell, as always, uh, to combine the generator and also the uh, discriminator, discriminator into a single GAN model. Okay, this, they are compelling to a new GAN model. Uh, they're specifying the optimizer which with Adam. Let's see if we can copy this code and if it compiles correctly. Okay, if errors. Let's see. As I can encode with calling layer. There is on this line. I will give it some context on the error and also the uh, exceptions message. Let's see if it can uh, give us the correct code for this one. Oh, uh, it creates a new uh, build generator code for build building new generator is on this one let's see if we can just uh, create a new line shadowing the first one so it will uh, if it doesn't work we can change it later and let's see okay for this one uh, it changes to our discriminator functions will be also uh, Doing the same for bug fixing. Specifying the line and the error message for this one. So we can see. Okay, it generates new uh, fix build generated functions. And the same with uh, build generator. I mean, uh, uh, yes. We'll be just adding a new cell for this or build for new build generator. Okay. We'll be using the second one and let's see if compiles. Still an error. Hmm. Let's just copy this code, the error code. Is it the same in player zero? I'm explaining off. Hmm. Let's uh, ask GPT for this. Okay. 
Okay, copy the code again. And let me change the, what this one is, build this commander and change for the new one. Okay. This one works, okay. Uh, this one works. Uh, you just have to do some bug fixing. Uh, you can also do it within the ChatGPT promptings. I will first copy the code, uh, the prompt, I mean, to the chat to after uh, define the list function and combine the generator and the schematic. Okay, we have done creating the uh, architecture for the GAN. What we can do after that is let me see if it's already using the optimizer okay and some uh, hyperparameters we can ask for that uh, a new cell if you can uh, to tune the hyperparameters used Okay, it creates a new generator and creating a new compiles. And let's copy the code. Let's see if it works. Okay, it works. It compiles successfully. And after that, we can train it again. And model. As you can see, it's create the function with generator and discriminator. Also, our GAN uh, models. And let's copy the code. Let's see our training. Hmm. It throws an error on generator text, predict noise. Hmm. Graph execution error. So, so right about fixing. And it says also we'll have this one pasted into ChatGPT and also this one for the last one. Let's give it some context. Ensure the nice generator with an uh, expected range. Have this one works. Okay. Uh, it also throws an error. Uh, what you can do, what you can do is, uh, try to re regenerate for this uh prompts and see if uh ChatGPT can generate a different results for this one but it also depends uh with your uh, code and data sets hmm. i think there's something uh with the uh, noise with the batch uh, size not the same with uh, the maximum and the minimum sometimes uh, I see. And this is, uh, it's not N, 0, 2, 1, 10 thousands. See if we can give it to them. Comparison. Okay. Uh, what you can do is try to bug fix the uh, with ChatGPT, it uh it may take some time, uh sometimes because uh ChatGPT sometimes generate different uh, results uh, depending on uh, some factors, but we can do what you can do is try to find the errors and try to see the try to get the correct code 
as you can see, uh, like before, you can just uh, try to uh, give ChatGPT some context so it can try to fix the problem. Or we can, what you can do is always just uh, Google the some papers uh, or already finished code and uh, it should be always available like on Kaggle or uh, or what you hugging face and many more and you can always just uh, use from there and also for regarding the uh, midterm exam uh, assignment uh, it will be the deadline will be don't forget the deadline will be next week on 8th of may so don't forget to do your uh to do your uh, assignment and also for this project it's only around five people already the submission only done by three people for now and don't forget to make it to uh, public for the document paper link and also the uh, hugging face models uh, repository and that's for all thank you everyone and uh, we'll continue next week